Hello everyone, my name is Mauricio Lastres and today I'm bringing you a little bit of a tutorial on how to install and set up MoTeC for use with iRacing. Data analysis has definitely become more popular in iRacing over the last few years because everybody's looking for that edge. With data analysis, you can look into not only your driving performance, but also evaluate the car's performance. You can definitely make a lot of setup changes based on what you see in the data. So um, possibly we might have a long video, so let's just go ahead and get to it. Uh, the beginning of it is just going to be very uh, basic and uh, for beginners on how to where to find uh, MoTeC, how to download it, how to set it up so that you can uh, export laps from iRacing. And then we're going to delve into the methodology of how to make workbooks and how to efficiently look at data. And, and then I'll give you some insight on the, the way that I like to use it and, and uh, what I think is best to avoid um, some of the pitfalls of going into data analysis for the first time. You don't actually want to hurt your performance and you actually want to use it to help you. So we're going to go over the, the right way, the do's and don'ts of data analysis. So let's begin. Okay, so let's go ahead and go online. Let's fire up iRacing. And we'll start off by going to the iRacing forum. And then within the iRacing forum, we're gonna look for telemetry discussion. And this is where you'll find everything that you need. So the telemetry discussion will include quick start guides, tips, uh, people have uploaded workbooks, and uh, the two most used um, data analysis packages are either Atlas or MoTeC. Atlas is actually supported by or endorsed by iRacing. And I tried using it once and um, I don't know, I guess I just didn't like it. Um, I didn't really give it too much of a chance, but as far as I know, it really can't do much more than MoTeC can, or at least do anything that I, you know, would wish that MoTeC did. I, I haven't found a reason to actually want to use it and I already knew how to use MoTeC from before, so that's why I chose it. So first off, there's a couple little things. Um, MoTeC has a couple different versions of its software available. You can go to MoTeC and search for, um, I don't know. Oh, it's called i2 actually, i2. And, and let's see, downloads. So right now we are, ooh, December 13th. I think I probably already have that. I'll check my release date. But so if you go online and you'll be able to find uh, the latest release of the i2 Pro 64-bit um, release. And um, I think it is not, like here they don't list the older one. So you can download the new one. The only thing about that is that there are people online that have posted a lot of things that are based on the 1.0 release and they won't work in the new one. Now I downloaded 1.1 and I think I'm up to date. If not, I'll update it anyway to the newest, newest release. But, um, but then that just means that, that you have to do a little bit of work to transfer everything. Um, it's just tedious and you have to manually copy paste and create new channels and maths and stuff like that. But um, the only thing that doesn't transfer over is really the maths and I guess uh, also the workbooks you would have to kind of remake on your own even though that part is easy. So let's try to start it out like if you were completely new to this and we'll, we'll go ahead and download the old one because you can have two versions. So where I'm going to go is to this one, Project 2015 Master. This gentleman, Peter Chamberlain, has uploaded a lot of stuff for the MoTeC. And this is kind of like a little bit of a summary of everything that he's um, done. And very concisely, he's also put in all the updates that have been made. And here you'll see where the original MoTeC file is no longer available on the MoTeC website, so I've added it here. Great, fantastic. Let's go ahead and download that. Okay, so we're not gonna read that. Finish, great. Now we have I MoTeC, cool. We're not ready to go there yet though. So now you just have the software package. 
that is useless until you can get the data from iRacing into the software. So where do we need to go for that? Well, there's a, another piece of software that we need to download and it's called Mew. And we shall find it maybe here. You'll see it mentioned in a lot of places. Um, you don't have to look far here. Like uh, it's called the Mew Exporter and Mew. And let's just go here, Mew, Mew, didn't see that. Okay, well, if somebody's posting it here, download Mew Telemetry Exporter, great. Um, here's GitHub. I guess this is the link of where you wanna go. You wanna go to github.com, Patrick Moore, slash Mew, slash releases. And here you'll see that there was an update on December 20th. And this works great. Um, it works with the old one and it works with the new one. You can see all the updates to it and you should make sure that you're up to date on it because there was a while there. I've been using Motec on iRacing for a long time, for several years, and um, there was a while there. Over the years, they've been making updates where they're actually giving you more and more data channels and the Mew exporter has to be up to date to be able to export those channels. Otherwise, it won't pick them out. And uh, I was just missing out on a lot of cool stuff that had been... Uh, updated since then. You can see that they've added the 360 hertz data, which makes sense why I didn't see it. So I don't think I'm fully up to date. Um, reduced beacon channel, fixed 360 hertz, beacons offset by one second. So cool. This is where you want to go. You'll have the Mu exporter. It's a simple little app. Um, even the source code is given for you. So then once you have that and installed, this is what it looks like. It is usually running and I always double check that it's running. Uh, you don't have to have it running um, while you're driving on iRacing. I'll see me is already running, but it'll export and boom, you're set. So now you're off and running. You can go to iRacing and, you know, do a few laps. Make sure you turn on your telemetry if you do not already do know. Okay, so now I have entered a test session and I just want to show you in case, and just to be thorough, that you want to go to controls and look over here, toggle telemetry logging. That is the button. I have it set to K, whatever. I mean, I don't think that's the default. Um, or maybe, I don't know. But anyway, so I have it. You have to engage the telemetry and there we go. So you see right here the little telemetry symbol that means that it is active and it is recording so you can go out drive you only need to set it once in your session The telemetry logo is always there once you uh, enable it uh, once in your session. Okay, so let's go. Ahead. Okay, so now we have recorded some data and now we can actually try to use it. Um, so again, you can use the Mew and you'll see. Okay, the Mew is running. Okay, so now, okay, so now that you've collected your first bit of data, you can go to Motec and go ahead and fire it up for the first time. Now, I'm going. Uh, this is great that I downloaded the old one, so you can go through the step-by-step -step process of setting up for the first time. It'll be identical to the new one if you download the uh, 1.1 version, 
but uh, it just kind of like looks a little bit different. That's all. So let's see. If you're new to I2, we recommend uh, you're you're getting your 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 you know walkthrough right now with me. So we don't need to watch that. The wizard will help you create a new project. Great. Next, what do we want to do? We want to do circuit. You have a couple of different options. And what do you want to name your workbook? I will name it I Racing. And project location. That's not really important. Go ahead, uh, use profile worksheets and maths, great. Next is just a little bit of a review, finish. And there we go. So now we have our MoTeC set up and we need to retrieve data. So how do we get our data? Well, we are going to get our data. Let me resize the screen. I want to use all the useful amount of space that I can. So now the last bit of the trick is getting your data from iRacing. So you go here to this little plus, or you can go, let's see, you should be able to go to, yeah, open log file. And this is what it comes with. This is the default path. And it gives you like a little bit of a bit of telemetry data from a test that somebody did somewhere and that's what it comes with. Um, you can also see that th these are the sample workbooks as well. And so already it comes uh, pretty sweet, uh, pretty complete. So anyway, let, let's open, uh, well, we have to close the log file first. So let's go ahead and hit this. Let's open the log file. And now we're gonna find the iRacing stuff. So where is it? Well, you have to go to your iRacing folder. So that's here, iRacing. And then you'll find within iRacing folder, telemetry. And I believe, if my memory serves me right, that is where all our telemetry data should be. Um, the files get pretty big. So it, sometimes it does take it a long time to load. And there they are. And we see today's test, including all the files from all the other times that I've used it. Um, I do sometimes like uh, clear it. Um, I don't hold on to the files for that long because again, it's just wasting space. Um, you don't usually need to look back that far. Um, so that's today, that's what we did. And this is the most recent file from January 21st. And I did some laps in the Mercedes at Watkins Glen and I was using the data logger there. So let's see, you can choose um, as many laps as you want, um, but you definitely want to check that you have a good one. So, because I mean, it'll log every time that you get in the car. So you want to see here, it shows total laps. Um, so then that'll be an indication of whether or not, you know, you may have wrecked or whatever. You see two, four, one. So obviously you don't want to select that. Eight, that's a little bit of a longer run. Um, let's go ahead and open this one. And let's just go through that. And there, there you go. Um, we have a nice setup. We have our data. Now you're off and running. You know how to get it. From now on, um, MoTeC always remembers where was the last place that you were retrieving data from. So you don't have to search for your folder again. It's always just going to, by default, go to the telemetry folder in iRacing. So now you're all set up. So this brings us to part number two of the video. Now that you have MoTeC and you have it set up and it's working, how do you play around with this stuff and the channels and whatnot? Well, let's go ahead and make some new stuff. Um, I wanna make a new workbook or maybe like a new project. Why does this thing come out like that? Okay, so now we have everything set up. You have MoTeC working, you're getting your data from iRacing and you have the Mio exporter. So we're already past the first step and now it's learning how to use it. So that's stage two of this video.